The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might need, at some point in your life, a little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take, they keep moving forward. Forward. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the NBA edition of the Moving Forward podcast. It's finally back. This podcast started as an NBA podcast, and that's what you're getting today. You're getting an all-NBA podcast with Nate and Ben Wilcox. So I recently written these articles. You can find them on the Moving Forward podcast, WordPress. I'm trying to figure out the whole website thing. I'm slowly figuring it out, but um, I posted them on my Twitter, at Jacob Loth 11 and my uh, and the Moving Forward page, where you can see my predictions and kind of what... I think of each team for the NBA season. So our first little segment here is I'm going to read by these teams, each one at a time. I'll start in the Western conference and the guys will give me their thoughts on the team. And if they think that they're going to overperform or underperform where I put them. So I think it's a pretty consensus pick for who the worst team in the NBA is going to be, but we start with Oklahoma city thunder. I have them at 15th and winning 14 games this year. Ben, Nate, your thoughts on the thunder this season. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, they're the worst team in the West and the worst team in the league. They're tanking. They tanked all last season. They won like zero games in the last 20. So I don't think that was a mistake. I don't think that's going to change this year. Uh, the only question would be, can Shea win them enough games but uh, to get like the 14th? But I, I totally agree. They're, they're the worst team in the league, no doubt. Yeah, 100%. I'm in the same boat. Um, I do think Shea carries them all over like the number you had. Um, but but like I like I said, they're the worst team in the NBA. You're not gonna get any uh <laughs> any tension from me there. So I agree. No, uh just to quickly wrap up their thoughts, what do you think of the young what do you think of Josh Giddy this year? And what do you think about their first round pick, Josh Giddy? I'm actually a really big fan of Josh Giddy. I think he's like really smooth, like player like like just super skillful and does a lot of things that are like really difficult for um especially rookies to do with the ball um and uh obviously athleticism has never really been his thing uh he put in australia and that just wasn't his thing but uh a smooth stroke and a really good passer and i think he'll be good i'm a little uh less on the giddy train I think he uh he gives me like the Mari Hazonja vibes where it's kind of like uh these guys who you don't get to see as much play they show flashes and highlights um they even will come to camp and they'll do some things that are odd and look good but um I think he's not the athlete that is needed in the NBA um but we'll see. He's he's a good passer and around the right teammates, especially with all the draft picks they can uh, have. Maybe they can build something with him. But I think it's going to be the other draft picks that uh, take that team to any level that's competing rather than him. Mm-hmm. That is true. He'll definitely have a hard time with the teammates currently around him, like being productive, just because that's not really his game as an ISO scorer. Yeah, he'll get a lot of opportunities on a bad team to play a lot of minutes, which I think is the most important things, especially for NBA players. Moving on to my 14th worst team, I actually have the San Antonio Spurs. I projected them to win the 17th game. They lost to Mar DeRozan in the offseason. I don't see a whole lot of bright spots on their team. I have them projecting, I have them projected. Uh, 17 wins. I think they're going to trade Derek White this season. Um, my two bright spots were DeJounte Murray and Keldon Johnson. Your guys' thoughts on my 14th seed, San Antonio Spurs. A um, little bit of pushback here. I I think personally that they're going to be better record-wise than the next two teams that you had, which are the uh, the Rockets and the Kings. Um, I, I'm not saying they get to like uh, – I'm not saying they get to like 30 wins necessarily, but I think they're better than what you currently have them slated out as. They don't have a single player like within like the top, what, like 40, 50 of the NBA, the best players in the NBA, which is like super like that, that alone is like enough to cause problems. But I think Keldon Johnson is decent. Um, I don't hate uh, the backcourt between Deontay and uh, Devin White. I think defensively they're tough and pop is always, the pop's always going to be in mode where he wants, like he's doing things to help his team win. So I do, I don't think they'll be behind the Rockets uh, and the Kings. I'm I'm more with you, Jake, on this one. I think it's probably the least talented roster in the league. I wouldn't be surprised if that organization gets through 30 games and decides they uh, are ready to move on to the next chapter 
The only way that they don't finish 14th for me would be a world where Pop just doesn't want to tank and some other teams do. But I think talent-wise, they are they have just about close to nothing. And I wouldn't be surprised if they moved on from Murray or White in some trades for some assets down the road just uh, to kind of get on the way to that next chapter. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not 100% sold on DeJounte Murray. I think he's solid. I think he's pretty good, but he's still only averaging 15 points per game. Um, he shot 31% from the three last year, and his three-point and his regular field goal percentage is below 50, which isn't the best. And then also they made a lot of questionable free agency signings. They didn't like the Zach Collins signing, which I hit on, and the Doug McDermott thing really didn't make sense for me as well. Also, Jakob Poto is not an NBA starting center, so – not really 100% sold on the Spurs. Moving on to the next worst team. At the 13th seat, I have the Houston Rockets. I think Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. will be a problem in the future, but I'm still not sold on the wings on this team. Jay Sean Tate is an older young player, kind of. He's 25 and is in his second season. And then also, I'd like them to start Sangoon, but I don't think they will. I like the future for the Rockets, but I just don't like them very much this year. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that sentiment. I think the the Rockets, unlike the other two teams, um, at least will be fun to watch this year. Mm-hmm. I think Green and Porter uh, Jr. will be electric at certain nights, but they're probably going to be a backcourt that will score 60 combined but give up 70 every night. Um, I, I like the Sangoon pick as well. Uh, Christian Wood's obviously a top 25, 30 player in the league. Um and that team will put together some nights that you're going to say, oh, wow, this team has a future, but it's not going to result in wins this year. Um, they're two, three years away from uh, probably competing for that play in unless they find some pieces. So uh, they, they should be fun to watch, but it's not going to result in wins. Yeah, I uh, I third the sentiment about Sangoon. I think he should be starting. Um, the only issue is if that uh, Sangoon were to start, that Jay Sean Tate would be the only uh, plus defensive player on that team. Christian Wood's okay at times, but a um, little skinny, a little lanky, and jumps the ball a little too much. Um, but I, I actually really like Jay Sean Tate. I think he's a really good piece. I'm, I'm sad that Jay Sean Tate's on this team because, like you said, Jake, he's a bit of an older player for his second year. I wish that he had a spot where he could be a – a dude off the bench and be more productive um, for like a, a solid playoff team. But yeah, they'll be fun to watch, but not very good. <laughs> yeah. I also predicted that John Wall and Eric Gordon will be moved this year for the Rockets. Do you guys agree with that sentiment? I just, I don't know what they do with John Wall. Like, I don't know who is out there ready to take. And I think that they can eat these last two years and deal with it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised about the Eric Gordon, Eric Gordon pick. I think a team could definitely talk themselves into Eric Gordon, helping them out. A playoff team could. Oh, great. I had them projected to win 24 games. That seems around right to me. I don't know what their fan duel odds are. That actually would have been a nice thing to add is their projected wins. Okay. Um, moving on to my 12th seed. I actually have the Sacramento Kings who are stuck in purgatory. Basically is what I've been saying is they're not good enough to get a top five pick, but they're not good enough to make the playoffs. I had them projected to win 30 games. Um, basically what I hit on the most is how this Marvin Bagley experiment has actually has absolutely failed. Like if you look at the other top four picks in that draft. He's absolutely failed, especially getting that two. You picked him ahead of Trey Young, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Luka Doncic. Um, not impressed by the Kings. And I, I don't know, they just keep taking guards in the draft and it doesn't make sense to me. Like, what are they going to do with all these guards? Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to be like, I told you so, but I literally told you so when this draft was happening. I, I didn't like Marvin Bagley at the time of the draft. Um, especially didn't like him ahead of Jaron and, um, Luca, obviously, Jaron's had injury problems of his own, but uh, Marvin's been very unproductive. Uh, I mean, the backcourt's solid, like, between Halliburton and De'Aaron Fox. That's definitely, like, it's productive, and I don't hate Rashawn Holmes. Um, so, I think I think there is, like, a good amount of wins to be had uh, here and there just with some solid talent. But Purgatory is right. Like, this isn't a playoff team, and they're going to continue to struggle until they move on from some of these bad draft decisions and this loaded-up backcourt that can't all play at once. Um, I'll say I, I have the Kings one spot higher personally. I think they're going to be better than the Pelicans this year. I think mostly, uh, maybe not in the actual ballot basketball talent, but in the win column, just because I think this team will play hard. I think Fox wants to win. I think the Mitchell draft pick is has looked in the preseason at least and through reports that he wants to win and he'll play good basketball or at least tough basketball. So 
I think that they might scoop up a little more wins than uh, people predict. Of course, Bagley's still there, and you know they're just one uh, step from him from you know trying to fight for a play-in game. So for me, I have them one step higher, but they're they're definitely in that uh, that range where they'd be lucky to make the play-in or they're trying to, or unless they go into tank mode and lose early. So, yep. yeah. It's, yeah, the team that I have in that 11 spot that Ben talked about is the Pelicans. I think they got worse this offseason. Um, I think they're going to start Devontae Graham at point guard, and I think that's a mistake. I think he kills ball movement and flow of the game. He's also not a very high three-point percentage shooter. Excited to see what Nikhil Alexander-Walker can do with good minutes. I like the Valanchunas trade, actually. That was really good. And then the Trey Murphy pickup, I think, is huge as well. I'm just not sold on either Brandon Ingram leading this team while Zion is out. And then also Zion has a major weight issue. He cannot control his weight. He's been out of – it's like I'm not sold on Zion either. Like when he plays, he's awesome, but I don't know how long his career is going to be. For right now, I'm like thinking he's only going to last like seven years in the NBA. Yeah, it's they're legitimate questions. Um, I think that he's such a freak athlete that um, when he needs to turn on, that he's just able to get into a position. But there's definitely questions to be had as far as the Valanciunas trade. Um, I like I like you said I liked it, but the fact that they had to do it because they made that terrible trade for I thought it was it ended up being terrible for Adams and Bledsoe. Um, that that was brutal. Um, and uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Devontae, I agree with like a lot of things you said. Nikhil's fun. Devontae Graham, I don't really like. Um, I think you probably have him properly linked. And once Zion comes back, he definitely helps his team get a number of more wins. So, um, Yeah, I think Zion's top 15 player in the league. He's an absolute freak. But um, I think this team definitely went backwards in the offseason. I think especially defensively, it seems that this uh, – front office consistently has decided to go against uh, building their defense, which has always been their, uh, the part that they struggle with. So moving Drew Holiday a couple of years back and then Lonzo Ball in the offseason to get Graham, who historically is a poor defender. So it, it just seems like this team's going to give up 130 a night. And even if Zion has 40, it's not going to be enough. So that's why I had them a little lower uh, behind the Kings, but uh yeah, I think they're. I think the front office has been consistently making mistakes, and I think that will eventually lead to uh, by the end of the season, Zion trying to get out of there. So that's my prediction for them. Yeah, I just think they're going to have to fight really hard to make the play in. The first team I actually do have in the play in, which I'm actually kind of excited about, is the Minnesota Timberwolves. What do you guys think about me having the Timberwolves as my first play in team? Um, I I actually don't hate it. It's this this weird thing where like you see a team that's packed with talent that hasn't performed yet. Um, I like Okogi. Uh, Cat is obviously a great floor spacer. Um, struggles defensively at times, but um, obviously has all the tools to be a good defender. Um, the only scary thing for me is I don't. I still don't completely understand who D'Angelo Russell as a player like is. I feel like I see a different player like each season. Um, and then Anthony Edwards was pretty inefficient last year, but they weren't asking him to be efficient. So I wonder if this year it's a different mindset for the team. And uh, Edwards looks Edwards looked good last year, just inefficient. I wonder if he looks uh, more uh, strong in those efficiency uh, metrics this year. Yeah, I think uh, I like where you have them. I think that that's close to their floor, surprisingly, in my opinion. They were really awesome to end the season, um, especially Edwards, who was horribly inefficient to start it. But towards the end was actually taking good shots and making them. Um, obviously he had that stretch where he was averaging over 25 a game and was just unreal. Um, Carl Anthony Towns is coming in fit. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at the standings at the end of the year and this team passes the Grizzlies Clippers and is more looking at that eight spot. Um, but I think, I think 10 a fair assessment for now, but I think they have a ceiling that could go uh, a little bit higher than you currently have them. Yeah, I, I could agree they can hit a higher ceiling. I think it a lot relies on does Edwards take that big jump in his second season and how productive is um, uh, Russell. Russell has his lowest points per game, 19 last year in his last five seasons, first time being below 20 in the last five seasons. But this is the first time that they've had a decent bench. They have Nas Reed. They have Malik Beasley. Patrick Beverly, actually kind of I like him on the Timberwolves. I think this team needs a little bit of dog, and he is a dog. But yeah, I like where I have them. Moving on to the ninth seed, 
Some people might be actually a little surprised, but not to me. I'm curious what you guys think. I put the Clippers as the second play-in seed, as the ninth seed. Thought that I'd be putting the Clippers at nine. Um, th- this team, other than – so so Serge Ibaka is, like, semi-hurt right now anyways. Kawhi's obviously out. And other than uh, those that I just mentioned, Paul George, this is a very, very talent void team. Um, I think Terrence Mann will be good. I think he was decent at times, but I do not like Marcus Morris. Uh, I watched him last year. He looked slow. Um, Batum was serviceable uh, as like a corner shooter and a bit of defender here. Reggie Jackson had that. Sh- the, the only weird play on this team that I don't completely know what to make of. So I expect Reggie Jackson to come back and look like anywhere near what he looked like in the playoffs. Cause at, at the time in the playoffs, he looked like an incredibly high level scorer. Um, but it feels like a really like talent void team. So I don't disagree. I actually really like where you put them at nine um, and without Kawhi this year, which I do not think they see him back. Uh, I, I agree with where that you have them. Yeah. I'm on a similar page. I uh, think they'll finish higher than the Grizzlies personally, but this team is one Paul George injury from being the thunder and they, they have a lot of holes um, the X factor for me though, is Reggie Jackson. If he's that playoff dude, then, uh, you could see them sneak seven, but I don't see him making it out of the play in game. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Paul George is going to have to be MVP level to keep this team afloat. Um, if they can get Kawhi back, obviously it's a different story, but I don't think that that is necessarily, uh, very likely given his uh, past. And the, the other thing I'll add is like Terrence Mann was really solid, like in that playoff run and towards the end of the season. And he has been in spurts when he hasn't been asked to be like a consistent player on a night to night basis. Like if this team wants to do better than this night, he wants to go better than 500. He's going to probably have to be what their third best player on mm-hmm. any given night, which I don't think he's ready to do yet. Yeah, I think he'll he'll have that on nights, but it's mm-hmm. again those uh, consistent performances that I think they'll lack overall as a team and from him. Yeah, um, I just think with Kawhi's history, he's not going to rush back an injury, so I don't even think we see him this year, even if they do make the play. Like even if he comes back, he'll be on a limited minute count and they'll play a really good team in the Western conference. So moving on to who I have eighth is the Memphis Grizzlies um, kind of the same spot where they have been. I think this is actually a pretty big Jaron Jackson junior year. He looks a lot bigger. He looks stronger. I actually think he's going to be playing a lot of five this year, kind of similar to Anthony Davis. Um, I have them currently at 43 wins. I think they are the eight seed this year. I like Desmond Bain to kind of slide into the starting lineup. I think they're going to go a little bit smaller, uh, but they do have that option to start Adams. They have some nice bench pieces. This is just a deep team. And I think that they're better than the Clippers. And I think that they're better than the Timberwolves. That's why I put them in at eight thoughts on Tim or Grizzlies at eight. Um, I, well, so one thing with the Grizzlies is you have to admire the way they've been um, able to draft like over the past, like five years with these like later first round and second round picks. I love Bane. Um, obviously, I'm a bit of a homer, but Tillman's legitimately productive and useful for this team. Um, Dylan Brooks has been great. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Jaron's been good in spurts when he's healthy. And um, I like everything you see so far is that he's healthy. He's in the best shape of his career as far as being able to he put on a little muscle to withstand an NBA season. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think I agree. Um, a, I could see, I can definitely see them jump in Portland, or if uh, John Morant, if John Morant does some crazy stuff, takes a level up, even sneaking higher. I'm a, I'm a little down on the Grizzlies this year. I have them just one spot lower at nine. I just had the Clippers above. Um, for me, it feels like the front office has kind of collectively made the decision that they want to wait. They. Uh, just paid Jaron Jackson, uh, their draft picks this year, Zaire, uh, he, uh, he is a project for sure. He's not a win now guy. So I think overall as a whole, the organization has kind of taken the step, like, you know, let's wait it out five years. Let's get to John Morant. Let's get to Jaron Jackson's primes. And then we'll see if we can compete. But, um, I think that they're a team that's going to be in the plan for the next several years. Uh, obviously the X factors being does John Morant take that next step to like a Trey young level um, where he can carry a team into the postseason and even to a second round. I don't think he has it yet. Um, And then Jaron Jackson, uh, 
playing at the five, is he able to rebound well enough? And do you need to have a four who rebounds well um, in order to have that team work defensively? Because I think uh, Jaron Jackson really struggles uh, rebounding the ball and he doesn't switch pick and rolls well enough to play the four. So he needs to play the five, but does he rebound well enough? Um, as Nate said, Tillman actually might be the answer there, uh, having a plus rebounder at the four to kind of help him out um, so they don't just lose the rebounding battle every single night. But offensively, he's insane. He does things that other seven foot one guys, whatever, however tall you want to call him, but he does things that other people can't offensively, and that's what makes him special. That's why he got the deal. But defensively will always be the question mark for him, how they uh, scheme around him. So, Yeah, I, I agree. It's weird. They took a player at Desmond Bain, who was a win now player two years ago, and then they take this project in um, Zaire Williams. So a little confused by that. Dylan Brooks had a huge step forward last year in the playoffs. He looked absolutely amazing. And Kyle Anderson's a really nice piece too. I think it's a really deep team. I'm also getting big Mark Jackson vibes from Taylor Jenkins. I feel like he could be fired soon for a coach that kind of takes them to that next level. Moving on to the seventh team, I have the Portland Trailblazers. They've been hovering kind of towards the bottom of the Western Conference for a while. I just think Dame needs a little bit more help. I've liked the moves that they made. They added Cody Zeller, which was nice. I actually really, really like the Larry Nance move to add Larry Nance on this team. Um, but Nurkic took a huge step back last season, two years ago, averaging 17 points per game last season, only 11. Nurkic, who I thought was a pretty decent center, has been pretty bad. And then CJ going from 23 in the regular season to a little bit above 20 in the postseason. Dame's just not getting a whole lot of help. Where do you think about me putting the Portland Trailblazers at seventh? Yeah, so this is where um, I might fluctuate, like I said, and have um, the Grizzlies one step up over Portland here. I just feel like when when this backcourt, and it's been like this for a while, but when this backcourt isn't, um, like this starting backcourt isn't on the floor together, there's like so many liabilities. Like they're, you look at their backups, Dennis Smith Jr. and um, Fernie Simons, who's been okay, been exciting at times, and then Ben McLemore, who – um, I've watched on a few teams now, and I'm honestly surprised that he's still hanging around the league. Huge fan of the Larry Nance signing. Um, but honestly, I, I think one of my favorite things about the Larry Nance signing is what it helps make up for and what Robert Covington can't give anymore, um, especially as uh, trying to still play um, the four. So I think the Larry Nance signing was great. The Cody Zoe signing is fine. Um, Nurkic uh, can do some, can have some really good nights, and I think he's a perfectly serviceable starting center. But the backups in that backcourt, I know uh, Dame and CJ are going to continue playing a ton of mega minutes, having them staggered out a little bit too. But there's real issues in the, the depth there. Um, yeah, I, I'm more on uh, par with uh, Jake on this one. I think seven's the perfect spot for them. Um, I don't think this Portland roster is the same come the end of the season, whether that's adding a piece and trying to go for it, which this might be the year to do it, considering uh, – the Lakers be, and the Nets being the front runners and both of those teams having questions right now. So if you want to try and grab the piece, I don't know what that is right now for them, um, but this might be the year to try and do it. If not, and they're not winning games and they don't feel like they're a piece away, then you might see Damian Lillard uh, or CJ McCollum moves, uh, specifically Lillard, um, to try and get that team some more youth and go back and do a rebuild. So I think uh, this current roster is about the seven with, maybe ceiling potential up towards five or four, but uh, I don't think this is the roster you'll see at the 82nd game. So uh, current roster though, I think seven's a good spot for them. Well, after uh, the events of today, they could probably snag Ben Simmons for what, like uh, Trenton Watford and a 2027 second. <laughs> Yeah, uh, bad, bad things today with uh, Ben Simmons. We'll hit on that later <laughs> yeah, after no, the reactions. But um, moving on to the sixth seed, I know this will probably upset Ben a little bit, but I have the Golden State Warriors. I think that this is their deepest roster in a long time. They added pieces like Otto Porter Jr. And then also Wiseman coming back from injury, Clay Thompson coming back from injury. I really like Moody and Kuminga looked really good in the offseason. The only thing is, can this team stay healthy? Uh, Clay is going to be out towards Christmas. Wiseman's missing the start of the season. Um, I really like Jordan Poole. I actually have him as my sixth man of the year, which we'll hit on later. But yeah, I'm just, I, I think the Warriors might stumble out a little slow and they'll pick up the halfway part of the season. But I do have them. Just making it over the play on seed. I have them winning 47 games next season. Warriors as the sixth seed. Thoughts? Uh, 
I think you're about right on. Um, we're obviously going to see um, a jump in productivity when Clay's back. That's a, a that's a given. Um, I think Wiseman will be better this year. I hope he's used his time um, while he's been injured to just absolutely lab the hell out of the film room and learn about all those things that he's been struggling with as far as, far as like decisions that he has to make on the floor, which, you know, is to be expected that he was going to have lapses in that area. Um, I, I think it was a little unfair to him to expect that he was going to come in and be great last year. Um, but I think the Otto Porter Jr. Uh, additions a little underrated. I see why people might like struggle with it. Um, and then uh, Moody could be decent shooting off the, off the wing coming off the bench. The only signing I really don't think does anything for them is Iguodala. I think the dude's burnt. He looked terrible last year with the Heat. Um, Agreed. But I don't think they expect him to. I think he was more of a locker room pick anyways. So I, I perfectly agree with you have him, where you have him right here. Curry's going to be awesome this year too, which will be exciting. For sure. Um, I don't hate it as much as you might assume. I'm obviously a big Warriors fan. But um, I think that for regular season, missing Clay is going to push them back probably towards more towards like 500. And so they'll be in the seven or eight seed when uh, he eventually comes back. If that's around January, then they could make a push for the four or whatever. But I think this team made a ton of great moves this offseason. Getting rid of Oubre for Porter, I think, is a huge plus for the way they play the game. Need somebody who can space the floor. Um, Porter does that. Oubre did not. Um, I think that this team, it, their record will really depend on how much they want to force these young guys into the lineup. Because I think this team can win. 50 some odd games if they decide they want to just win and not develop these guys. But I think you'll probably see uh, Kaminga in the game. You'll probably see uh, Moody, the other guys, um, probably more than would help win. Um, Curry, I think, is an MVP candidate, obviously. Um, Draymond Green looked good in their run at the end of the season, much better than he had in the last couple of years. I think he's. Uh, a guy to look out for to see if he still has the juice to get maybe not back to 2016 level, but to uh, a level where he's an extremely productive third guy on a team. So I think this team is probably going to be around the five or six, but it's the team where you're just like, Oh, well, if they're playing the jazz, the Suns, you know, the nuggets, whoever it is in that first round of the playoffs, they're going to be the favorite, even though they're going to only have three home games. So yeah. Um, yeah. They should be really interesting though. They will be an interesting team. And I just want to give myself some kudos. I saw their lineup just got announced. I perfectly predicted what their starting lineup would be. So hey, kudos let's go. to me. <laughs> um, moving on to the fifth seed, I actually have the Denver Nuggets um, as the fifth seed. No Jamal Murray for at least a couple of months of the season. Um, a big step up from Otto Porter last year, who went from nine points per game his rookie year to 19 in the regular season last year. Did struggle in the playoffs, though. I like their move of adding Jeff Green. I think they get a healthy Will Barton, a full season of Aaron Gordon. And I really like their rookie Bones Highland as a backup point guard for the time of when Monte Morris is going to be the starter. I really like him. I think this is a huge Michael Porter year. I think he has some most improved player buzz possibly this year, too. Um, if they can stay, like Ben was saying, if this team can stay around 500, until Murray gets back, I could see them easily missing out on the play and being around a five, four, six seed. I think any of these six, five, and four seeds are pretty interchangeable, but I have the Nuggets at five, winning 50 games this year. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. Um, I had them at that same spot. I might have swung them up into three, four range had it not been for um, – obviously not having Jamal Murray for a significant period, but I do think they have like some depth there that can be like ser serviceable. Um, Compazzo's my, he's a, he's a fucking psychopath when he plays basketball, but that being said, he's like productive at times. He just looks a little wild doing it. Um, and then I do like Bones Highland as well. Um, and I think uh, they'll be able to kind of figure that backcourt out and, and that rotation out until Murray gets back. And then uh, Jokic is our reigning MVP. I mean, they can't say a ton. One thing that I will say about this team is that um, I think Aaron Gordon's significantly better this year. Uh, I felt like he had a really hard time getting into the flow of the offense. I think that changes um, to start this year. Yeah, I agree. I think you, I got, you got him uh, in the right spot here at five. I think uh, really these teams like, three to six you can make a case for all of them to move up um i think uh specifically the the key is obviously michael porter jr can he be that second guy while murray's out he uh here's a stat for you i did some research 
he shot 45% from three last year. If that's even close to replicable, then he could absolutely be that guy. He was shooting seven attempts. The dude is an absolute burner from three. And if he can keep that up at his size, it's just, I mean, you can see the potential of him being not only a good second guy, but he's like edging on top 15 player in the league at that point. So if he's close to that, then I think they'll be totally fine. Obviously, Jokic is a top five player in the league. Um, he's probably the best center in the league, him or Embiid, and he gives you so much offensively that uh, that team just can't go a season and not win 48, whatever you need to get out of the playing game. So they're going to be good. They're going to be fine. They got to hold out until Murray, obviously, but uh, do that no problem as long as Porter Jr. is even close to what he's been able to show uh, so far. Okay, moving on to the four seed, the Dallas Mavericks, a team that I thought was going to try to make some bigger moves and try to really improve. They didn't really add very many things. I think losing Seth Curry two years ago was an awful mistake, adding Josh Richardson, who's bad. They flipped him for actually a young center in Moses Brown, who I really do like. Um, one, The big thing for me is can Kristaps Porzingis just decide to be that Robin role. Let me give you some numbers uh, before his knee injury in the 2020 bubble. He was averaging 23 points per game, looking like old Chris Stapps and even last year, averaging 20 points per game until the playoffs in 2021, where he only averaged 13 points per game. Um, they re-signed Tim Hardway Jr. I have them as the four seed. I think they'll be really good because I think Luca will be a close to MVP candidate. My only notable move for them was adding Moses Brown and then adding Reggie Bullock for floor spacing off the bench. Those are the two things. And I don't really like Jason Kidd as a head coach. I have him as a four, but I could easily see them actually being the six. And then that Warriors and Nuggets team sliding up. Um, thoughts on Dallas Mavericks at four. I'm so sad that you put him at four, not because I disagree with it, because I wanted you to put him at like six so I could come in with my hot take of the season. And my hot take of the season is I legit think this team can push three seed, can push um, to be close to the two seed. I really, really like what I see. I know you said they didn't do anything crazy, um, but I think one thing that is like I'm just going to predict is that Chris Stapps is going to go back um, to kind of what we've seen before because I think feel like throughout that bubble – um, season and leaning a little bit to the start of this one we heard a lot of like the complaining and stuff um, but uh, I, I really like this team I think Luke is gonna be incredible this year I love Brunson and Burke backing him up and uh, the Moses Brown pickup I think you're right is a, a solid player I don't totally know where he fits in, in the rotation but I really like this Mavs team I'm excited about him this year yeah, I think the Mavs and the Warriors are definitely the most volatile of the teams in this range. Um, I think obviously you get Luka Doncic, uh, you're going to win enough games to be in this conversation for the three to six range. He's that good. He's an MVP favorite this year. Um, he's amazing. The question, Porzingis, I haven't seen it from him. I consistently get my hopes up and he always disappoints. Um, I refuse to be on that train this year, so I have them a little lower. I think uh, I would probably flip the Warriors and Mavericks in uh, my rankings, but um, that's not to say it's not possible. Uh, obviously, they were incredibly good uh, offensively last year. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s a uh, solid player, Dorian Finney-Smith as well, Maxi Kleber. They have enough guys to uh, around Luka to make them competitive, but they still don't have enough to push them into that upper tier um, where they're competing for a championship. So I was disappointed by uh, their lack of movement uh, in the off season. And I don't think that they made enough moves to, uh, unless they do something during the season, um, turn them into a potential Western conference finals candidate or whatever you may have. Okay, moving on to my third seed. I have the Phoenix Suns. Not much to really say about them. They are running basically the exact same team back. Um, they picked up Abdul Nader from the Utah Jazz, basically to replace the Tory Craig loss. And then they actually picked up the backup center they desperately needed in the finals last year in Javel McGee. Um, I just think this team will be really solid. I think this is a coming out year for Devin Booker. And I think DeAndre um, Ayton is really going to make them eat, not giving him this extension. I have them at 54 wins. Thoughts at the Suns being the three seed. Um, only two concerns would be this eight in contract situation, but I think that this team feels too connected and professional to let that bother them. And then at times, Tory Craig was legit important for them off the bench. But other than that, I mean, we should just expect 
most of these young guys just take one step forward, a half a step forward, whatever it is. And uh, as long as the age doesn't finally catch up with Chris Paul, like, like you said, this is the appropriate spot. Yep, I, I agree. I think it would take a uh, injury to knock this team out of the top three or four. Um, I think Chris Paul has been amazing and probably one of the most underrated players. Um, obviously, he got some of his accolades when he made it to the finals last year, but that team's really solid. Aiton's amazing, especially what he was able to put together the second half and in the postseason. Um, Mikhail Bridges, who they just paid, great uh, three and D player, probably the best three and D player in all of basketball right now. And he's still got room to grow because he's so young. Um, Devin Booker took the step last year, turned them into a legit title candidate. So I don't see anything different from them this year. I think the only interesting part about uh, them is what they do with eight in the future. But as far as for this year, they're going to be there uh, towards the top of the Western conference final and are probably an injury away or a, uh, a poor season from the Lakers away from really being the favorite in the West. So, okay. Moving on to my regular season champions. I don't think we can, anyone can disagree that the Utah jazz are the best regular season team ever. Um, have them as the two seed 57 wins. They added Eric Pascal. They added Rudy Gay. Besides that, they didn't really do much. Um, I basically hinted at Rudy Gobert needing to be able to stay on the court and Donovan Mitchell and Conley needing to be healthy. Any disagreements with the Utah jazz at two? No, little little scared about Conley um, going into year. I don't know what, but definitely pushing um, the age for a small guard like him. Uh, and then Rudy's going to continue to do what he do, does. He's going to murder you when you're not ready for him in the regular season. And when he can start to plan for him, he's going to start to be more limited. Um, but it's, it's pretty much the same team. Uh, I did really like the Jared Butler draft pick. I think um, he learns awesome behind Conley and Mitchell and develops really well. So that's at least something to be excited about. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the same story for the Jazz. They're going to win close to 60 games this year, and then nobody's going to take them seriously in the playoffs because Rudy Gobert is unbelievable in the regular season. You can't plan for him when you're taking a plane from Miami, from New York, and you fly in first day, and all of a sudden you're in Salt Lake City and you got to play against the seven foot two Frenchman. He's unbelievable in that scenario. But when you get weeks to plan for him and you get to play him several times and figure out what you need to do against him. Uh, that's when they become uh, less of a juggernaut on defense. And uh, uh, I don't see that changing this year, but as far as the regular season, they, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the best record in the league. They're just uh, an incredible regular season team. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is amazing. I don't think we mentioned him uh, yet, but they, they are definitely really solid. I just don't see uh, it happen in the playoffs. All right. We'll finish out quickly with the last team in the Western conference. I have the Los Angeles Lakers winning 61 games. I know we want to do a long Russ rant about how he will be inefficient. Uh, and I a hundred percent agree, but that will become playoff time. I think this team with those three superstars will win a lot of regular season games, securing themselves either the one or the two seed. Um, I think you see a big Anthony Davis year. It looks like they're starting lineup. They actually have Anthony Davis playing the power forward to start the season. Deandre Jordan starting at center. So that's kind of their starting lineup. But uh, besides that, what do you think? Lakers one seed. DeAndre Jordan started at the five is insane. That dude is, I don't know. I think, I feel like he's going to play himself out of that spot personally and AD or just start Dwight, I guess. I think Dwight could be better. Um, but yeah, I, I won't do my Russell Westbrook thing. We've done in the past. I'm sure we'll talk about it later in the season. Um, this team's going to win a lot of games. Uh, they're, they're, they're old as hell. Nobody's going to argue on that, but they're, they're talented and they got a lot of a lot of guys who know what they're doing and know how to play basketball. It's going to be really exciting to see it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think they're going to come out of the West uh, barring any injuries as the number one seed. I think um, as you mentioned, I'm obviously anti Russell Westbrook. I think that plagues them in the playoffs, but uh, for the regular season, it really does add somebody for when AD or LeBron need to rest to carry an offense. I think that's going to be nice for them to have some energy every night that was probably lacking at times last year. Um, th my question marks uh, remain in the postseason for whether that team can put it together then. But as far as the regular season team, they are uh, going to come out of the West as the number one, maybe two, if the Jazz get hot.
Yeah, and Malik Monk's a super exciting addition to this team, too, um, that I feel like is a little bit underrated at times. I think he could be really fun for this team and could eventually be important or a starter if he plays himself into it. Yeah, I agree. I think he's the perfect guy around LeBron just as a shooter. Uh, I think he was a good ad for them, for sure. I feel the same way about Wayne Ellington on that team, too. Just a good guy just to sit there and space the floor. Let's move on to the Orlando Magic. Um, I have them as the worst team in the Eastern Conference. 18 wins. They added Suggs. They added Wagner, who I don't think is NBA ready yet, but has the possibility to be. Thoughts on Orlando Magic, worst team in the Eastern Conference? Got to be, right? Uh, I don't see a way that they aren't. I don't know who else is going to surpass them. Um, They have some exciting guys. Obviously, I think Suggs is really good and he'll be fun. Um, but, uh, and I do really like Jonathan Isaac, but you talked about in your article, very limited offensively thus far in his career shows a lot of promise defensively, obviously, but, um, definitely should extend Wendell Carter and Suggs will be good. I like Cole Anthony off the bench in spurts, although I worry that sometimes that he just, he's got that mentality that you need to have if you're going to be a a spark plug scorer like him, where he thinks he's the best dude on the court. But I think that's, that a lot of times works for him. Um, and then uh, I'm still a fan of Fultz. I love watching him play, but obviously not what he thought he was going to be. Uh, this will definitely be the worst team in the East. Yeah, I agree. This team's going to be terrible. Uh, they do have some fun pieces. Isaac, obviously, Suggs, um, Fultz. I think Cole Anthony does fill that six-man role really well. Um, but not much more to say. This team is not there yet, and they don't plan to be – I wouldn't be surprised if they're tanking with 50 games left in the season because they're going to uh, they're going to need some more players, some more talent before this team is ready to compete um, in the NBA. Moving on to the 14th seeded Cavaliers, I think this is the year we finally see Kevin Love moved because I think they're wanting to commit to Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. I think possibly Colin Sexton gets moved this year too, and then I think we also get a big year from Darius Garland also having some buzz for most improved player of the year. Um, thoughts at the Cavaliers being the 14th seed in the East? Um, I have a little bit of pushback on this one. Um, I don't necessarily disagree that they could find themselves here. Uh, but I think if I had to do my rankings, I'd like them better than the Pistons, and they'd be close to coming over the Wizards for me. Uh, you made a really good point about Jared Allen, the Jared Allen signing. I think it was really good. I think him and Mobley will be – I think they're like a perfect pair in that front core where Jared Allen can make up for a lot of things that Mobley um, can't do defensively, and Mobley's going to be able to make up for those things that Jared can't do offensively. Um, I'm a fan of Okoro and that in sex land, man. I love that backcourt. Uh, I know Colin can be inefficient at times, but I think Darius Garland took a serious step forward last year and will likely do the same thing uh, this year. I really like Garland. I think he's um, super talented and all the efficiency numbers point towards him being a, like a good guard in the league for a while. Yeah, I'm with Nate on this one. I think uh, I have them above, at least for this year, um, the Pistons. I think Garland is um, really a big breakout candidate. I think he's kind of giving me the vibe, and I don't want to sound like he's going to be Steph Curry, but he has that Steph Curry, Monte Ellis uh, look with him and uh, Sexton where he's so talented, but kind of having to share the ball is – suffocating how good he can actually be I don't think he's going to be Steph Curry but I think he has um, a ton of talent to one day be a top five point guard in the league I think uh, if they're able to move on from Sexton and get some good pieces around him that they could be really good Allen's obviously going to help them win now they'll get rid of love whether it's buyout or a trade if they can get that but um, I definitely think that there is talent on this team. I haven't even mentioned Mobley. He's going to be ridiculous both on both sides of the ball. So I think they they have a chance to win some games this year. Um, but I, yeah, I have them just above the Pistons, although I do like the future for the Pistons a little bit more. Moving on to the Pistons, who I have the 13th seed, winning 25 games. Cade Cunningham officially out for the opener tomorrow against the Bulls. So we will not see him for the first game. Sad cry face, cry face, cry face. Um, the Pistons have traded every player that they had before Troy Weaver got there. Seku being the last to go. What a steal to actually get him for four second round picks. It's actually a steal considering he just keeps on getting cut by teams. Um, I like this team. I think their defensive backcourt has a lot of promise with Cade and Killian. And then I think Sadiq, Jeremy Grant, and Isaiah Stewart is super, super solid. I think this team will be really feisty but um, still be a really not that great team and just continue to improve for the draft, which I think all 
Pistons fans are rooting for because if the Pistons make the playoffs somehow in the next two years, they lose their first round pick. So um, I think they continue to be bad. And I think we see actually a huge step forward this year from Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart. And I'm hoping to see that from Killian Hayes too. Yeah. This feels like a team that's like, you look at every position, you're like, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I like that. That's solid, but nothing like is going to do be enough to out talent. Um, like those teams that we're going to have in the top 10, uh, top eight of the, of the East. So they're going to lose those games just on a lack of not having um, just, they don't, this isn't the complete project, right? We're still rebuilding. We're still rebuilding. Um, I actually, my favorite player to take a step this year is Killian. Um, I think everybody was way too hard on him. I don't He played very few games last year. And um, I think there was a lot of slander um, that was unnecessary. The three point shot will come along. He had a tough transition in the league during COVID coming from France, very limited time with the team. Um, and then uh, I, I like Isaiah Sadiq should be primed to take a step forward and Cade Cunningham saying all the right things to make him a uh, Detroit classic real soon. So uh, this team's exciting. It's fun. She's not going to win a ton of games, which is good. Yeah, I, I'm super excited about the future for this team. They have young, talented guys and every position on the floor. I agree. Um, I think the, the problem with them winning this year is that young guards who are making plays typically don't result in wins this early. I think Kate will show flashes, but you just have to figure out the NBA game um, when you're playing a as impactful role as he will be because he's going to have to be the offense for this team uh, one day. But when you're that young and the same can be said about uh, Jalen Green, uh, those young guards typically struggle in their first year on bad teams just because they have to do it all. Uh, the efficiency won't be there, but I think, I think if you can see some steps in the right uh, direction from Killian Hayes, then this team is one to look out for in four or five years where they're, they're contending for uh, some uh, high positions in the East. Moving on to my 12th seed, I actually have the Washington Wizards taking a step back. I think the team got a lot deeper. I like the Corey Kispert signing, but I don't think it's a long-term move. I think Daniel Gafford deserved the contract extension he just got. I think he's going to start over Thomas Bryant. Um, Rui Hachimura didn't improve very much from his first to his second year, slight improvement, and need to see more out of Denny Adia. I think we see players like Caldwell Pope and Harrell get traded at the deadline to contenders for draft picks. And I think this might actually be the year that we see Bradley, Boo, Bradley Beal moved. If they don't trade him this season, I think he's going to leave in free agency. Um, so I have the Wizards coming in at the 12 seed, who is a team that might be feisty with the playoffs for a little bit, but towards the deadline deciding to tank. Thoughts on the Wizards? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I was actually, Rui was one of my favorite players to uh, kind of to see highlights of, check out every once in a while what he was playing against Detroit um, the past couple of years. And you're right, he didn't take the step that he needed to. So I don't hate him. I think he can still make that step. But, uh, and then Gafford, I agree, deserved the contract. He's their second best player on the floor. Didn't what he defined at. I actually really like Aaron Holiday. I thought he's been productive. But um, the guys they got back from L.A., I, I don't know, I have pretty mixed opinions on between uh, Kyle, Montrez's defensive struggles, um, playing the five especially, and then uh, KCP, he, he, he's probably going to be moved um, to a contender where he can be productive, uh, but he's just not a fit for this team. Um, so I, I would probably have them where you have them. Uh, like I said, I could see the Cavs surpassing them and them taking an even further step back. Yeah, I think, I think this team will be uh, maybe the worst team in the league defensively this year. Uh, I think Kuzma, uh, Harrell, and Beal all struggle, and they'll all be in that starting lineup. So they're going to be um, really bad on that end of the floor. Beal's not going to be able to score enough to keep up with what they're giving up. So I think uh, I'll make it short, but yeah, this team's going to be uh, pretty bad this year, and I wouldn't be surprised, or at least I'm hopeful that they move Beal in uh, – start trying to uh, officially rebuild moving on to my next team. I have the Charlotte Hornets just missing the play. And I know it sucks. A lot of people like LaMelo. I like LaMelo personally. I just don't think they're there yet. I think the inconsistencies with um, miles bridges at times with PJ Washington at times, and then the injuries that Gordon Hayward suffers. Plus I don't think that Mason Plumlee is a starting caliber big, and that's where they're going to be starting at center at the start of the season. So I just don't think this team is ready quite yet. I like book night and I like Kai Jones. They're just not ready yet. Yeah, that's exactly it. And the other issue is that you have a really deep East this year, um, which makes it really hard to get in those play in positions. Um, Lamelo is going to keep, I think, 
stay on this trajectory that he's setting up, which is for him to be eventually become a superstar in this league. I don't love Terry Rozier. I feel like he can be a little inconsistent at times. But that being said, when he's on, he's on. He can really change games. He can be a really tough shot maker. Um, the biggest thing that could throw like your pick of them at 11 out the window is if Hayward's able to be healthy and solid for the whole year. He could really help elevate this team a step up. Um, they're pretty deep. I don't love Oubre. He's okay, but the the draft picks were solid. Um, I'm really excited to see some Kai Jones, Lamelo Lobs. They're going to be very dynamic <laughs> when they do get on the floor together. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think Lamelo is um, going to be a uh, special player. I think uh, his second year he'll take an even bigger step, even though he looked uh, pretty ridiculously good last year. I think he's uh, going to take another step, uh, probably scoring the ball. Um, Gordon Hayward, if you get a healthy season from him, this team all of a sudden is looking more towards the eight. So mm-hmm. I, I personally have them quite a bit higher than you have them uh, for those reasons. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I think Ubre does add some stuff uh, defensively, especially with their fun zone. They, they kind of are going to have some length between – you know, you get Kai Jones in there. Lamelo Ball is big for a uh, point guard. Um, they get rid of Graham, who is probably their worst defender. And uh, they could be good defensively, or at least better, I should say. Um, and this team is going to score the ball, and they're going to be fun. That's that's the best part about this team is right. is watching them more so than whether or not they're going to, you know, compete for uh, championships or whatever. But this team is a ton of fun to watch. Yeah, league pass MVP right here. <laughs> For sure. Moving on to my first team in the play in in the Eastern Conference, I have the 10th seeded Indiana Pacers. I don't think the team improved very, very much, but I do like their coach at upgrade um, from all accounts. They hated their coach last year. I don't even remember his name at this point. Rick Carlisle is a veteran coach who got ran out of Dallas. He's back. I like the Tory Craig signing, re getting. TJ McConnell is good. I just think that we haven't seen Warren in a while. He hasn't played, and Chris Dorte will replace Doug McDermott. I just think this team's okay. Um, we watched a lot of Pacers basketball, oddly, last year, and I think Sabonis, for being underrated, is kind of overrated at times, too. I'm not the biggest Sabonis believer. I, I actually uh, – we did watch a lot of Pacers basketball last year. I really like Sabonis. I think the issue is just that – and we've been talking about it for, like, three years now is him and miles Turner don't fit. And this front office has refused to decide if they, and I think they should obviously pick Sabonis, but I don't think that it, it's cohesive. It just doesn't work. I really think Sabonis should be playing the five and be dynamic down there and be kind of a Walmart version of uh, Jokic. And uh, I, I, I don't understand why Turner's still on this team. It felt like there's, there are Ben trades out there and they're trying to get this perfect package when in reality, I think they could boost their ceiling instantly by just allowing Sabonis to play um, the five or allowing Sabonis to play with a, a five that does different things than Miles Turner, a uh, Miles Turner, excuse me. And other than that, like they're, they're a relatively boring team. There's not a ton of exciting about this team. Brogdon, LeVert, Warren are going to do their thing. They're, they all kind of have their role. Um, if, if I had to make a pick for him, I might slide him up one or two spots just because for the sake of cohesion with how, how many of these guys have been together, but I don't, I don't necessarily love it. I just think they need to move on from, either Sabonis and Turner, and I don't think they should move on from Sabonis. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that take. I think uh, they have a ton of really good players who would be really good on a lot of really good teams, but none of them necessarily mesh together. I think they, they have this weird um, combination of do they want to be a defensive juggernaut? Do they want to be you know, really slow and methodical on offense, but then you have Turner in there who's jacking up threes 10 seconds into the shot clock. So I totally agree with that sentiment where they, they are going to win games and be in the play in this year, probably if uh, all those pieces stay together because they have the talent, but this team currently constructed uh, needs, needs some changes before it can make a push into that top six and get out of this play in situation. All right, moving on to my ninth seed is the Boston Celtics, a team which I did not think improved at all. Kind of a hot take-ish. I know that um, Tatum is really, really good, and I like Jalen Brown too. I think it's just those two, and then I'm not excited by very many pieces. They have Marcus Smart. I think this team is actually building to sign Bradley Beal in the offseason, believe it or not, is what I think they're building for. Um, But I, I don't like Josh Richardson on their team. They finally got rid of Tristan Thompson, so I'm happy about Things I had as a plus is Robert Williams will actually get starting minutes. Dennis Schroeder showed why he 
he really fumbled the fucking bag last year. I don't like Dennis Schroeder at point guard. I think the team will make the playoffs still, but and and they took back the corpse of Al Horford, which I don't understand. That's what I ended my article with. You also took back the corpse of Al Horford. Dot dot dot. What? <laughs> no, I saw that, and I was I, I like don't get me wrong. The dude, the dude, he's 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 getting corpse ish, but but he's been okay. Um, he's obviously not gonna be defensively what he was, but he still makes good decisions with the ball, and um, has definitely can still shoot it. Uh, Schroeder, it's it's understandable to be down on him after kind of the playoff struggles that he had, but it's also important to remember um, kind of what a dynamic scorer he could be at times. Uh, for that Lakers team in the past. And then uh, I, I really think they should have moved on from Marcus Smart and flipped him um, at some point over the past two seasons. They haven't they have said they're going to stick with him, so be it. Um, and then obviously every big two. But, yeah, this this team, I personally probably have them 7-8. Uh, I do not hate the pick for nine. I could see a regression. I would not be so shocked. Um, I, I the, For me, this is the biggest disagreement I had with you. I have the Celtics, for me, finishing fifth in the East. I think uh, Schroeder it, it did not mesh with LeBron. That playing style did not go together. Um, similar to Westbrook, he needs the ball in his hands. Um, whereas the Celtics, uh, they have uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who's probably the two best duo of uh, players off the ball right now uh, get, for wings for him to play with. So. I think it was a huge addition by subtraction getting uh, rid of uh, Kemba Walker. Uh, Schroeder will at least give you a plus, even though uh, he's not the best defender, but anything is better than Kemba Walker defensively. A healthy season from uh, Jalen Brown and this team is all of a sudden, I think, uh, looking towards six or five pretty easily. I think Jason Tatum might be in some MVP conversations early. Uh, he's, he's a top 10 player in the league. And I think that'll show even more next year when he, if he can get a healthy team around him and also Robert Williams is the real deal. Time Lord is a freak of nature. If he can get a healthy season, if you get 65, 70 games from him, I just, I can't see this team in the play in game, uh, under those circumstances, uh, provided they all hold true. Okay. The team is dealing with a lot of COVID issues right now, so they might get a tough start to the season. Moving on to the eighth seed, I actually have the Toronto Raptors, who I am a huge fan of this season. I love Scotty Barnes, who will be coming off the bench. Goran Dragic at point guard was actually sneaky good for them. I like OG Ananobi to take another step. Pascal to take another step. Van Fleet. They also have Gary Trent Jr. They have Preston Sachua. They have Malachi Flynn. I feel like this is a really, really solid team for a team that got the fourth pick in the draft last year. I have them taking the biggest jump from a bad team to actually being a decent team. So with my eighth seed, I have the Toronto Raptors. Um, This was probably my biggest. I don't want to say I'm, I'm not it's not a huge disagreement. But I do think they're lower than this. Um, I could see them easily falling um, uh, below the Hornets, um, slipping all the way down to like towards 12. Um, I, I mean, Goran, Goran's fine. He's definitely serviceable. He does good things with the ball. He helps um, his teammates be better. But he's not a dynamic point guard by any means. And then if Fred Van Fleet's going to have to be this team's leading scorer um, because we just haven't seen the development from Pascal that I think some people thought they would see. Um, but it's kind of understanding, like, Pascal, he, he doesn't do a ton with the ball. He has a lot of uh, repeated moves that people figured out, and he's incredibly athletic. Uh, spin but move, spin felt, move, spin move, spin you know, move. Yeah, there's a class. I know it's a classic joke, but like really, like it's like it feels like spin moves. It feels like um, post ups and kickouts that are super predictable. And uh, and then like Ken Birch, like all right, I, I don't I don't know. No, nobody really gets me excited on this team. Scotty Barnes, I think, will be good, um, but. I, I don't know. Per- personally, this team doesn't do it for me. Even Gary Trent, uh, undersized, hasn't been shooting the ball as well as he did early in his career. So, yeah, I, I don't love this pick. I'd be a little lower. Yeah, I, I have them much lower as well. I have them in the 12 range, 11-12. Uh, uh, two, I do think this team will be incredible defensively um, when they don't have Van Vliet and Dragic in the game between Achua, Barnes, um, OG and an OB. This team has a lot of really, really athletic wings that can guard just about anybody. So I think uh, I think they'll be fun in that aspect, but they're they're not going to score the ball well enough to be a playoff team for me. 
Okay, moving on to the next team. I actually have the New York Knicks making the play in. I just think last year was a little bit of an anomaly, especially for Julius Randle. Average 24 points per game. think he digresses a little bit to 22. Do like the development of Toppin and Quickly and also R.J. Barrett. My main thing is Mitchell Robinson needs to stay healthy. And how good is Kemba Walker and Derrick Rose going to be the older they get? So I have the Bulls as the, or the Knicks as the last play in team. 44 wins, the Knicks. Yeah, I'm super confused about what to think about this team this year. Uh, like, obviously, the uh, their forwards between RJ and Julius, I think, are really good. Um, but we saw it with Kemba last year. Like, the dude gets torched. And some nights, the, the, he doesn't even play well offensively, and he's still getting torched. Um, Kemba, by all accounts, is a great teammate, but I just think he's over the hump. And uh, for that reason, I think I would agree with this, although it is a very confusing team. Yeah, I think you got them in the right spot here. I think they are a tough team to project because they do have some uh, a higher ceiling than this. If Kemba Walker can go back to Charlotte Day, Kemba Walker, I don't think that's the case, though. Um, they Between all their point guards, none of those guys could guard a stick in the mud. Uh, Derek Rose is too old. Knee issues, obviously. Emmanuel Quickly is way too little. Uh, Kemba Walker, obviously, has been exposed all uh, season last season. So I think... I think that's the question mark, but uh, if Julius Randle can be an all NBA player again, then they might have a chance to move up. But yeah, I, I have them right around seven right now. A uh, team who a lot of people thought maybe I'd move a little bit higher. I actually have them as the six seed Chicago Bulls, 47 wins. I love adding Lonzo Ball. I love adding DeMar DeRozan. I think the starting lineup is really good. They just have a really, really crappy bench off the bench. Currently they're bringing Derek Jones, Jr. Um, Alex Caruso and Kobe White. Those are the names of notes. Besides that, they have no big man depth whatsoever. This team is a solid eight deep. If some of these guys in the starting lineup starts to get hurt, I think the team gets a lot worse. They just don't have enough depth for me, but I do see them as the first team not to make the play in 47 win Chicago Bulls. Yeah, uh, I I know there's a lot of truthers out there that are like, Zach Levine's finally got what he needs. It's time they're going to be like, they could push top four. I agree. They're not deep enough. Um, I am a huge fan of Patrick Williams. And obviously a huge fan of Lonzo Ball. I think those two defensively are great for this team. Um, but the other three defensively, I don't, DeMar can show it in spurts, but Zach has been spotty at times. Um, one thing that you mentioned in your article that I definitely agree with, that Zach should be a much more efficient player this year. And that I think that will ring true. I, I have this team outside of the plan. I have them number six, uh, so not too much higher. But I, I do love this team. They're electric offensively if they can put together a mid-level defensive performance this season they're going to be um ridiculously uh tough team to beat i think the the question mark on that end is is zach levine a bad defensive player because he's not trying in previous years when he had bad teammates or or is it just that he has no idea what he's doing out there i think it's probably the former i think he uh this year will be um, much improved defensively. I think DeRozan's weird for that team, but he's obviously talented and can score the ball. Uh, they should be fast paced. I think Levine and uh, Lonzo is a better combination than Lonzo and Zion. Uh, the way they're going to be able to run the floor and just beat teams, yeah. especially teams that are tired or older, are just going to get shocked in the uh, in the beginning of the season by uh, this team's speed and ability to get up and down the floor. So I think Lonzo Ball is going to take a big step and they're going to be a really good team this year. Yeah, yeah another uh, league pass MVP for sure. I'm going to love watching this team. Both the Ball brothers carry the league pass. <laughs> Moving on to my fifth seed, which is actually the Atlanta Hawks. I think that this team just needs a little bit more time to develop. They're building the right way through the draft. They added Sharif Cooper and Jalen Johnson, who will add to the mix. I would like to see more minutes from Reddish. Uh, I just think this team's going to be really, really good. I just really like the top teams ahead of them. Um, I could see them overtaking Philadelphia, but Philly's proven to be a really good regular season team. Um, I don't know what's going on with Simmons after today, but I have Phil I have Atlanta Hawks at five winning 50 games. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't hate the pick, but I do think after the mess that's going on in Philly, especially today, it got worse. And then we'll talk about your heat pick later, but I could really see this team being top three. Um, uh, I love, obviously, Trey. He's annoying to watch, but I can't complain about annoying to watch players after being such a James Harden fan stand my entire career. Um, and then Bogdanovich is legit. Hunter is really good, and I think Hunter can very seriously be the second-best player on this team, depending on how John Collins looks. And then 
Uh, Capella is completely serviceable as a big and plays really well with Trey. And I think uh, Onyeka does the exact same thing when he comes in off the bench. You know, he'll be out to start the season. But um, this team's really, really, really deep, um, have a ton of wings that are really good around Trey. I like them. I think if I had to make a pick, I think they'll be the three. I, I agree with Nate. I have them at the three as well. I think this team is has so many really good players between Trey Heater. Um, if you can get one of Hunter or Radish to break out this year, all of a sudden you're talking about this team competing with the big dogs in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Capella's obviously shown uh, that he can be really good with uh, another guy who will throw the lob to him, like uh, Trey Young and James Harden did in the past. Uh, I think John Collins is a really good player as well. This team is young. They are going to be able to withstand the entire season, especially with all their depth. Bogdanovich, so many wings that could uh, put together a good season for this team and um, win 52, 53 games, uh, no problem, especially with the level that Trey Young closed the season with. So I think uh, as long as the new rule doesn't uh, destroy Trey's game, they will be uh, one of the top teams in the East. Yeah, uh, I still have the Philadelphia and the Heat above them just because they've been doing it for longer. But moving on to my four seeds, the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't know what's going on with Simmons. He's been suspended for the first game from the team. We won't get too much into that right now because we're trying to move a little bit quickly. But uh, I have Joel Embiid as my MVP candidate. I think he wins the MVP this year. I think this team is really, really good. They finally figured out the spacing a little bit last year until Simmons was a doo-doo head. Um, just really like this team, have good bench pieces. I think Maxi takes a huge leap this year. Um, Thibel needs to continue to work on his offense, but I have them winning 53 games slightly above the Hawks, um, but that could change. Everything's changing in the NBA super quickly. So Philadelphia 76 years at four. Yeah, this team's weird where it has um, perhaps the, the craziest storyline and then everything else around it is incredibly boring. Like nothing's changed other than the fact that they just have the craziest storyline in the NBA right now with Ben Simmons. I mean, they're kind of running it back. I think Seth Curry was super good for them uh, last year and plays really well with um, Joel. Uh, Tobias Harris, you mentioned in your article, overpaid, but a necessary overpayment, I think, for what this team needs. And then uh, when Thibel and Simmons are on the floor, it's real tough to score against them, but it, you know, then they're very limited offensively. Um, but I agree. I love the Joel Embiid um, value at, on MVP this year. Um, so I would probably agree. I would probably have them around four, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm way lower on the Sixers this year. I, I expect a net zero uh, from Ben Simmons this year. I think he's going to be a non-factor if he plays at all. Um, and the reason I'm so low is because I do not believe in Tyrese Maxey as a playmaker. I think he's wonderful coming off the bench and being a spark plug scorer, but as far as initiating the team's offense, I think he'll struggle, um, and I think Embiid will will feel that uh, a little without having Ben Simmons uh, getting him the ball the way as deep as he typically likes, so I'm down on them this year uh, for the Ben Simmons reasons. Moving on to my three seed, I have the Miami Heat. I think this is the most improved team um, this year. They added Kyle Lowry. They added P.J. Tucker. They added Markeith Morris off the bench. They got Victor Oladipo on a steal of a contract. I like Dwayne Dedman as a backup big. And, of course, they still have Udonis Haslam for his one millionth season. I have them as the three seed, 56 wins. Um, I really, really like this Miami Heat team. I think they're deep. I think last year was a necessary loss in the first round. I think they were burnt out. And I think that they really revamped this year and I'm excited to see what they can do. Uh, yeah, this is probably my biggest disagreement other than maybe the Raptors. Um, I, I think their, their uh, guard depth is very weak between hero and Gabe Vincent, Gabe Vincent flash at times. And then um, they're like their front court PJ is going to be a starter for this team. And if not, it's going to be Markeith Morris. Like, that, that feels scary to me. I know PJ was good for the Bucks team in his role, but he would need to do more for this team. And then Dwayne Dedman's the only serviceable backup big uh, behind Adebayo. He'll be fine. Um, but I would, I don't think this is a, a three seed. I would, this is probably my biggest disagreement. Yeah, I had them at four uh, just because I'm high on the Hawks. I think this team will be good. I think they'll be a tough out in the playoffs. They'll be sturdy defensively. My biggest gripe with them is I do not believe uh, the Tyler Hero hype. I think he uh, doesn't quite have it athletically to score consistently. He's going to have nights where he gets hot, but I don't think he can 
consistently give them that scoring presence that they desperately need outside of, you know, Butler's not uh, the score you need. Kyle Lowry's never been a score. Bam's not going to get you 30 a night. So I think they really, really need between him and Duncan Robinson, a guy who can score the ball. And I don't think either of them are going to give them uh, quite what they need to take them to the upper tier of the East. But I do have them right around where you have them. Moving on to my two seed, the Brooklyn Nets. No Kyrie Irving, no one seed for you, basically is what I said in my article. I think that they're still a really good team without Kyrie. I just think that they're basically unbeatable with Kyrie. But Harden and Durant is going to be tough to stop. I think this team will be bad defensively, um, especially during the regular season. I have them winning 60 games. I think they're still going to be a really, really good team. But the question is, will they get Kyrie back? We'll guess we'll have to wait and see throughout the season. Deep team, a lot of veterans, but I could also see a few injuries happening to some of those veterans that kind of leave them wanting more. Um, one of my big things I did hit on is I really, really do like Cam Thomas from LSU. I think he really shines this year, especially off the bench. Yeah, I, I was going to say, um, you can talk all day about Harden and Kevin Durant. They're very exciting players to talk about. But my two, I think, biggest players that I'm going to focus on this season are what Cam Thomas can do. Um, offensively, it was a little bit of a spark plug. And then can Claxton take a step to be uh, starting big for this team that can be decent enough in his role? Um, I think the, the Bucks and them will go right back and forth. It'll come right down to the wire. They're going to have very similar records, and it's almost impossible to predict which one's going to come out as the one or two. Um, but I, this team's going to be incredible, and especially if they get Kyrie Irving, then I think it's all over. Yeah, I think uh, for me, this team's still the best team in the league if Kyrie uh, never appears in a Nets uniform ever again. I think Harden and Kevin Durant is easily the best duo in uh, all of basketball right now with the only team, the only two that are close with AD and LeBron. Uh, I think uh, what's not being talked about enough with this team is the job they did uh, – with getting Patty Mills to fill in for Kyrie Irving under this circumstance, I don't think it's as big of a loss as people are thinking because uh, Patty Mills is going to be able to get those guys the ball. And he obviously had an electric Olympic performance. I think he's, he's going to be a solid player. He's going to be able to shoot the ball around those guys. And those guys don't need any more offense uh, beside them. So I don't think I, I, I do think with Kyrie Irving, they are warrior level efficient. Um, from the 2017-ish era, uh, but I think even without them, they're my favorite, although uh, obviously much more up in the air than if they had them. All right, moving on, my one seed Milwaukee Bucks, not much to say about that. They brought basically everybody back. They added Grayson Allen, which I actually think is a pretty nice touch. Um, they added everybody back. I have them winning 63 games, the winningest team in basketball. I think they're really impressive. I think they're going to be missing Dante DiVincenzo. He's not in the starting lineup. He could be just coming off the bench for them, but I do have them losing Tucker, which hurts, but I think Bobby Portis is actually more important for that team as a bench scorer. Uh, I just think this team will be really solid in the regular season. Can they do it again in the playoffs? Uh, they proved me wrong last year, but I have the Bucs as the one seed. Yeah, I, I agree. They're going to be great. They're going to be awesome. He's going to be out awesome. there for MVP all year. Um, the My one inhibition with this team is that I feel like Drew Holiday had one strip and one lob and we forgot about all the ways he effed up throughout the playoffs last year. Um, he, we legit had a lot of conversations about is Drew, Hall like, is Drew Holiday going to be the reason this team can't do it? Um, and he's one year older. That would be my only concern. Uh, and I think when it comes playoff time, I legitimately think the, the Nets would beat this team with or without Kyrie in like six, maybe five. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the Bucks are definitely a team who could win 60 games, no problem. They're extremely talented. Giannis is the best player in the league uh, outside of maybe Kevin Durant. Um, and if you want to throw LeBron in, then fine. But this team is uh, going to be extremely solid. They're going to be right around there at the end of the playoffs. It's just uh, whether it's the question of really for me, whether the Nets have Kyrie Irving. And if they don't, uh, can the Bucks find a way to overcome them? Because uh, I think I think I'd still have the Nets favored in that series, but it's uh, certainly not a uh, guarantee if they don't have Kyrie. Okay, let's quickly go around before we end this recording. Um, who do you like tonight? Just quick, just say who you like: Bucks or Nets tonight. 
Uh, I actually like the uh, Bucks tonight. Um, I, I think this Kyrie situation has been put the team in a little bit of a weird spot. I think the Bucks uh, win tonight. Like I said, I still think the Nets are a better team. Just feeling it tonight for Milwaukee. I got the I got the Nets tonight. I think Kevin Durant puts up 400 points. I also like the Bucks tonight just because it's their ring ceremony. I think they win the game tonight. Let's move on to the other game. Who do you like tonight, the Warriors or the Lakers? I'm going to take the Lakers minus three. I also saw a thing tonight saying that Wiggins and Draymond will be on a minutes restriction. I just think the Lakers have heard a lot of shit over the start of the preseason. I think they win this game pretty handily, actually. I have not anything on the Warriors. I just think that this Lakers team has something that they want to prove tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on the Lakers. One thing to add, Jordan Poole, his points prop tonight, 17 and a half. The under is plus 110. I will be hammering it. I do not think he puts up 18 points in the game. On that, no, I think he goes over, but because um, <laughs> he's going to be jacking shots, especially if Wiggins is on a minute restriction. I do have the Lakers winning the game, though, uh, for that minute restriction reason. I think uh, – this, this night's going to come out one of two ways. Either Westbrook plays really great and they crown them the champions, uh, the media does, or they uh, you see like a seven turnover, 10-point game from him and everybody realizes that he's a fraud. So, All right. Um, do we quickly want to do – let's go very fast. Um, for my MVP this year, I'm taking Joel Embiid. Ben, your MVP. Steph Curry. Nate. Luka Doncic. Your defensive player of the year – I am taking Anthony Davis this year. Nate. Giannis. Oh. Rudy Gobert. Nate. Rudy Gobert. Uh, I'll take uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Sixth man of the year. I'll be taking Jordan Poole once he moves back to the bench for the Warriors. Uh, give me Clarkson. I'm just going to take the odds on favor right now. Um, I'll take Jordan Poole. Uh, the only issue being if Clay's out until like March. How do you yeah. know? Okay, good value there. Okay, moving on to your most improved player, Nate, most improved player. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. could be a possibility, but I really like OG Ananobi. I know I kind of shit on the Raptors, but I like him. I also – I like Michael Porter Jr. Okay, I'm um, trying to find who I wrote mine in my article. Uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, yeah, I think I have Jaron Jackson Jr. winning most improved player, having a huge step forward this year. Um, okay, is there any other awards that we're really missing? Um, this rookie of the year. Oh, rookie of the year, um, Kate Cunningham. Kate My Cunningham. favorite value pick is Jalen Suggs, who I will be taking is Kate Cunningham. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might be at some point in your life. A little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take? They keep moving forward. Forward. 